All right, so we are drawing today. It's gonna be a little hard to see, um, but today we're drawing wings on um, Mortacia. She's the goddess of death. And here she is, she's peering over a ledge. Um, this would be in Hades. It used to be city of the dead or realm of the dead, but Mortacia, she's kind of been kicked out of Hades. Um, and she, so she had to run away. She, so she had to go to Tartarus, but here she is, she's back in Hades. She's trying to reclaim what is hers, her kingdom. Um, but right now it's the, the evil god of, uh, of war and tyranny and, and genocide has taken over. He was killed by his twin brother, Atnes. In any event, he gets sent to hell and, and he takes over hell and after he dies. And so now it's no longer the realm of the dead. It's the realm of the damned. And so a lot of demons have taken up residence here. And you can see one of them here. This is an old school, from my perspective, old school. We made, we, we, me and my buddies invented this guy in high school. He's called Frizzit. Kind of like Drizzit, and yeah, 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 it rhymes with Drizzit, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of spelled the same as an F instead of a D. And we didn't care then, but um, but these demons, they've taken up residence in Hades. Um, and so he's a hunter demon. His job is to actually uh, go and basically stop um, souls from trying to flee. So he has to go around, it's kind of like a bounty hunter. They give him like a bounty hunter demon and so he goes and he gathers up souls that are trying to escape and then he'll bring them back and he'll get rewards. Um, in any event, today we're drawing wings. Um, this is my first attempt at creating a video um, to do with um, uh, this comic book. It's gonna be called Children of the Grave. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't have a lot of time to draw right now though. I work full time. Um, and so I'm just putting a little bit of effort in and really just trying to learn how to draw again. Um, and I'm, so I'm making lots of approximations. So my very first piece here is very, very smudgy. Um, but that's okay because I love drawing when I was in doing life drawing class in college. And this really is an opportunity for me to, um, to get back into this. And I've really been following these artists, um, these comic skate artists who are, uh, and uh, storytellers and writers who are creating their own books. And I'm like, wow, I've always wanted to do that. That's amazing. Um, and so you have this rebellion. You, people are like, what's comic skate? It's like, well, let's uh, think of it like a rebellion in the comic book industry. Um, and a lot of creators didn't like the way the industry was being run, the way certain stories were being told. Um, and this idea that they'd just become too biased and political, uh, all these storylines, it's like, let's make comics fun. Um, so, and at first it was fan led, and then some creators came in and said, you know what, we can serve this market. And a lot of the fans uh, responded to that. And, you know, I don't have any um, illusions about, you know, making big bucks, but these guys are making big bucks. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, they go make an indie book, you know, make a few thousand dollars. And that's probably maybe if I, you know, put, put something up on Indiegogo, um, that's probably what it would raise. Um, I got to build up this channel though. Apparently everyone says you got to have a YouTube channel, um, and you need to be able to, um, and, uh, you need to be able to talk to, to fans. You got to build up a audience. And so that's going to be really tough at first, I think. So I think the, the trick probably is to just start creating content and then posting it. Um, my phone won't let me live stream, so that kind of sucks. I'm gonna have to get a computer set up down here, but I just kind of want to show you what's going on here. I'm, I'm, I'm really, this uh, auto adjust really sucks. I hate auto adjusting the um, exposure and the white, um, um, white, um, white contrast. It, it just goes back and forth, and I'm on a glow box, and so that's gonna be really, really tricky. But if I just hold it steady, you can see the line work I'm really building in here. Um, and I gotta say, this wing over here, doing three-quarter perspective on dragon wings, which are kind of like bat wings, is really, really tricky. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm, it's kind of like, I'm a very poor shot when I'm making my lines. So I just keep drawing a line. I say, is that it? Nope, that doesn't look quite right. And then I just keep drawing the line, drawing the line, drawing the line. So I'm really feeling good about this 
um, her left wing here. This right wing, really, really easy. Um, and again, here, I did this one, you know, did, I was watching um, Kelsey Shannon's gesture drawing video before, and um, that's kind of how I start drawing these guys. I'll, I'll just gesture them out um, and just put approximations about where I think these guys are gonna be. Um, and then I'll come in and I'll start adding detail on top of that. And then it, I, it's kind of like, I draw kind of like um, somebody would chisel um, a sculpture. I like keep chopping away and then just, is that it? No, erase, draw again. And then until I got it exactly where I want it. Um, and then I, then I say, okay, the, the, that's, the, that's the perfect outline. Um, let's go in and start building up the, the bulk of this now. And so it starts out, it looks like a bunch of scribbles, but then, so here, here she is kind of peering over the edge here. And I just came in and I just really, really quickly. Um, and I said, okay, she's gotta have the sword. Um, she really needs that sword because she's in hell. Um, and if you don't have a sword in hell, you're gonna get ripped to pieces. Um, and she's the goddess of death. So it's like, oh, can she kill the demons? Um, you know, to be fair, you know, she can kill the living. And I don't think the demons are really like, they're not life forms per se. I mean, I guess they can be destroyed, um, but they're not mortal. So, because they're, you know, it's kind of a spiritual realm. So there, I think different rules apply here. So she can't just say, you know, like she could in the mortal world, you know, and she's still responsible. She still has the portfolio of death. So somehow she's, you know, in this afterlife and trying to reclaim our homeland. But in the meantime, in the mortal world, um, people are still dying and they get sent here. The problem is, and this is the kind of, um, and I'm going to explain it. This will be explained in the book if and when I ever finish it. But it's a premise, right? You got to know what the premise is. You want to know what the story is about. Otherwise, it's like, oh, well, what's Children of the Grave about? Well, basically, the and it's kind of like a D and D style um, setting. So there's lots of gods and goddesses, and they're kind of like your key players. So think of like uh, Roman or Greek mythology, and you have many people who are competing for this realm of the dead. And so, in addition to this evil god of war that's taken over um, the, um, which is now the realm of the damned, um, in, um, Mortasia's um, aunt um, is named. Dantuia and Dantuia, she's the goddess of the undead. And since she started um, basically messing around with the mortal realm and bringing people out of Hades, so, or taking souls back out of Hades and putting them back in their bodies, back in the mortal world, um, a place called Danae, um, it's undermining Mortasia's capacity, her ability to judge the souls after they die has been compromised. Um, and so for that reason, she needs to reclaim what is hers. The, the, she, if you can judge someone to be dead, they're dead, boom, they're in, they're, they're, they're in Hades. And then suddenly the souls start disappearing. Dantuia, her aunt, is stealing her powers away. And so she realizes that she can no longer render judgment on the dead. So what effect does this have? in the realm of the damned now. Basically, and this is sick, everyone who dies in the mortal world gets sent to hell. Nobody goes to heaven, no paradise. Everyone goes to hell and there they are. It's inevitable. Everyone's gonna be born, they're gonna die and they're going to hell because she cannot send them on their way. Because if she sends them on, her, on their way and then Dantuia makes an undead out of that soul. She'll be pulling them out of paradise, and that's just going to completely mess up her powers. So she has no choice. She can no longer render judgment on the dead. And so the city of Hades is just getting overpopulated. It's filling up, um, and this is just an untenable situation from her perspective. So she is engaging, um, embarking upon a quest. She was in Tartarus. That's where she was hiding out. She was in exile. She says, I am got to get the heck out of here. And I actually have a, a board that kind of um, um, shows you where she was coming from. But basically, she's got to walk to Hades. Um, she could fly there, um, but she's kind of reluctant to go there. So I think she maybe she wants to take in the sights or... Um, see a few, um, um, cre uh, you know, um, afterlife style um, creatures and 
um, she's got to go on a journey. She's got a journey there. She needs a few items um, in her former kingdom in order to um, combat this problem, to take on um, Arithus, who's controlling the, her city. She's got to retake it, but first she's got to deal with Dantuia. It won't do any good to knock Arithus out if she can't um, restore order to Hades. And so, but in the meantime, um, so she's going to go to Hades and she's going to try to take it back. She thinks she could, she's strong enough and she's going to find out if she's strong enough to take on an entire city full of demons, um, bat wing uh, kind of the demons are flying around. It, it, it's hell, you know, think of um, Dante's Inferno. She's in Inferno and she's just going to She's going to try to take it over single-handedly. How can she do this? What can, how is this possible? I think the odds are against her. There's a, another god in, um, who's taken up residence there. She's just one goddess, um, and there's another god there. And he's probably more powerful than she is right now um, because she's not in full control of her powers. Um, and that's a really bad situation. So we kind of feel bad for um, uh, Mortasia here. Um, and she is the hero. Um, and, you know, I, I think she has good intentions, so is she good? Um, well, in D&D, &D, like, you had um, good and evil. If she was, if the goddess of dead, of the dead, was totally good, wouldn't she favor good people over um, the evil in the, um, in the mortal realm? Is that really fair? Um, should the goddess of death be evil? We think of death as a bad thing, right? But it's a natural part of life. So I guess in a D&D &D sense, she would be um, neutral. She's kind of neutral. She, all she's trying to do is to restore the balance. Um, uh, there are many, but because the balance favors evil right now, um, and Arithus is absolutely evil. Arithus, who's making, he's torturing all these poor souls that get sent to hell. Um, and so she's got to do good things in order to bring the balance back. And I think she's going to learn some things about herself um, and along the way. Um, and, and, and maybe maybe she'll do more good now. Maybe she's because um, they have morals, they have uh, you know moral dilemmas. They're just because they're goddesses. We think of gods and goddesses in the Greek sense. They're um, kind of detached, right, um, from humanity. But nobody knows humanity. Um, more than the goddess of death. She knows every soul. She remembers every single one of them. Um, and I think she's beautiful. I, I, I love her. Um, and I can't show this to you yet. I can, um, there, uh, the, 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 the design for Mortasia, I described it to an artist and I commissioned him to, um, to, to, to you know, basically send, send me a really cool picture of of Mortasia. Um, and I just, I sent him the first chapter of my book I was writing and I said, you know, this is the story, this is the backstory, this is who she is. And he just sent back this beautiful rendering. And she looks a lot, it, it, it's essentially this. Um, I, I, and I won't show it to you yet. I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't, I don't want the artist to feel like, oh, why is he doing this? You know, I mean, uh, why, why is he, why, why is he, why is he bringing me into this? And so it, it's my character. Um, I own that painting that, or the, the, the drawing, um, but I just wanted to show her to you. Um, and that's my version of her. That's Mortasia. She's the goddess of the dead. And here she's fighting the hunter demon Frizzet. They're in Hades. Um, and this is going to be children of the grave. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I still got to go in and, and do these panels. I got to draw, draw backgrounds. I hate drawing backgrounds. Um, in, in life drawing class, I would spend no time on background. I would just say, I'm drawing figures. That's what I want to do. I want to draw figures. But if I'm going to make a comic book, I really got to double down here and figure out how to do this. So this is like drawing all over again. Uh, I, I, when I was in art school, it started in 1998. Um, and I, I did that for about three years and then I switched uh, majors. I did political science instead. Um, but while I was doing political science, um, and it took me a long time to graduate because I switched majors right in the middle of school. Um, then I, then I took art as a minor, um, and it was, uh, it, it was an interesting time. I got to do more life drawing as a, at an older age. And I really feel it helped me to, um, and painting, lots of painting. Um, I really felt it helped me to, um, uh, to, you know, to learn a few things and to mature as an artist and then 
the, then I'm then I'm you know graduated. I'm writing, uh, doing all these op eds and press releases, and near the Washington D.C. area. It's like I don't want to. I'm, I got this story. I want to write my story, and it was going to be a novel. And it's like you know what? Why don't I just do a comic book? Why don't I do a graphic novel? So I actually started doing that many many years ago, um, and I did a few panels, and I was tr coloring it with markers, and you can see one of the pictures on my Twitter um, account, but. Now I'm seeing what these guys are doing, and I, I see a model where I think it could it's, it could actually be viable. But I gotta I gotta really um, double down my efforts here, and I just wanted to introduce you um, to Dragon Wings and line work and what's going on here. So let's uh, zoom in here, and we'll just kind of scroll around, and you can see hands. Hands are tough to draw, I gotta say, but you know you just keep on cutting at it, cutting at it, and eventually. They look the way you want them to, and we almost got. I mean, she's practically finished, but I. I mean, like I just keep on changing. I'm like, oh, that elbow was screwed up, so I just had to fix her elbow. I had, um, I had it kind of foreshortened, but really, it's kind of a side view there, and so the elbow should have been pointing out more. So, and she's she's got to be strong. So I want her to be beautiful, but she's she needs to be able to lift that sword. That's like a claymore. Um, you know, and she's going to hold it with one hand. I mean, that's pretty, she's pretty strong. I mean, she's a goddess, so she's going to have kind of like a super strength thing going on here. Um, not that she needs it. She can, uh, she can handle herself and she's good at avoiding conflict. So here you can kind of see her wings are kind of like, um, tattered. They're tattered. They have holes in them. Um, and that's because she's the goddess of death. They're dragon wings. She can fly. Um, but this character has been in development since the year 2001. That's when I started Children of the Grave. I was going to make a campaign setting. We did a D20 thing. Uh, we got a license. I uh, put in an ad and a magazine. I said, writers, artists, come, let's do Children of the Grave. And then we were just collaborating. It was like fun. We didn't make, we published one book. We sold like 20 copies. And then I was like, I got to study for school, guys. I don't think I can, uh, I don't think this is viable. I'm not going to be a game maker. Um, everyone already has their favorite campaign setting or they do a homebrew. They don't need Children of the Grave setting. Not without the story. You need to do a story. You, people want to know if you're going to do it. If you want a cool campaign setting, probably has a really cool backstory. It's got a lot of things going on. But I'm glad I did that because it, I was able to build this world. And I'll show you some of the um, maps and things that 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 I drew um, and all the locations. And like I mapped out this whole world, this um, Danae and the Nionesius, this continent, um, and Di uh, Dionetsia, another continent. Um, and the whole continents uh, look, look, kind of look like a dragon on a, on a globe. And so um, Mortacia's mother, she's the earth dragon, um, and she's called Dionysius. And so I, 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 there's a lot of inspiration from these. Um, I'm sorry, is she Dionysius? Yeah, she's Dionysius. Um, and because I got to look it up. It's like, oh, wow, I got this encyclopedia. I got to go look up all the gods and everything. But... Um, her mother um, is the earth dragon, um, and so she has brothers and sisters, uh, kind of like in Roman and Greek mythology. Um, and again, I think she's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying drawing her, and I'm really glad I stumbled into Comicsgate. Um, just I started writing about it, and I'm like, wow, this is cool. They're making, they're making books, and they want to take on um, kind of the culture uh, war a little bit, and that's really interesting. Um, and so I wrote about uh, this a couple times for my day job, um, and now I'm I'm saying I'm jumping in. This uh, this looks really fun, even if I can't you know even if I can't do this professionally over several several weeks. I think I can get a page done. Maybe if I can get it to the point where I've learned how to draw again, and then these pages will come a lot lot faster, and maybe then I can start knocking out a page or two a week, and then you know after a year there will be a bunch of pages and. Of course, I got to ink them and then color them. I got to learn how to use Manga Studio. It's a real pain in the butt to do all this and write the story. Um, the way I'm going to write it, though, is it's in my head. So I have a lot of idea. I know where she goes, and I'm thinking that 
she's going to encounter a lot of beings like Frizzit. And they're going to, so right in this scene, he's probably calling her a witch or something. What are you doing back here in Hades? You shouldn't be here. I'm going to stop you. And she's going to, you know, maybe she'll have something, um, probably something wise to say. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think of her as really a snarky um, uh, kind of character. But um, we'll see. I'm, 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 it'll come to me. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm leaving room for letterboxes and everything like that. There'll be conversation. Um, but I'm just mapping these scenes out in my head. I'm just going to put them on paper because that was the worst part of writing a book was I hate describing uh, scenery. It's like, I can just draw it. Why am I doing this? Why am I torturing myself trying to describe a setting and all the backstory and everything? I mean, I could just show it. I want to just show it. And that's the real trouble of writing a novel. It's like, you, I wrote the first chapter. And you know what I did? I wrote the entire backstory. I said, oh, yes, this is the entire premise of, the, of, of, this, of this epic, dark, high fantasy, Children of the Grave. And I, I submitted it to a, um, a, kind of a, a professional writer. And he said that this is really, really good. You're good. He thought I was a good writer. He thought it was well written. And he said, but you don't need all this backstory. You don't need to tell everyone in the first chapter so they have to read ten, five pages of just what this is all about before they can jump in. You're just supposed to jump in. Comic books and graphic novels, they let you just jump right into the action. And then you can find out what the story is all about along the way. Um, and that's what I aspire to. We're going to tell a really great story here about uh, Mortacia. Um, she's just one character. So many other characters. And they're going to all have um, their own quests and goals that they need to accomplish. And I'm really looking forward to this. This is, this is my first go at a video. And I figured just showing you the panel and kind of what I'm working on here um, would, um, would, would give you, and just kind of talking over it and just giving you an idea. You can kind of take it in here. Now let's focus on Frizzit a little and I'll wrap this up here. He was, um, he was in another comic book we were gonna do in high school. Um, and it was going to be about villains. It was going to be about villains. And he was going to kind of open up a portal from hell into New York City. And then the villains of the story were going to try to stop him because he was a competitor. It's like, oh, no, he's bringing all these demons into New York. we got to push him back. So then the villains would be fighting the villains. And then so does that make the villains in, in the, um, the ones who were there first and on Earth? Were they, um, were they the good guys then because they were fighting bad guys? Did they have a common enemy? So that everyone has to band together and stop Frizzit. So Frizzit just pops up everywhere in all these stories. And I was like, you know, he's, he's, so, he, I, he's a fully developed character, fully realized, and he needs to be in Children of the Grave. So I, and he belongs in hell, so there's no reason he can't be in hell, in, um, in this hell, um, in Hades, as a hunter demon, doing exactly the same thing, rounding up souls that try to escape, which, of course, you would, because there's no...